What's up guys? Welcome back to Newswave. Well, it's finally happening. Rockstar is ready to unveil the next big entry in the Grand Theft Auto series and it's coming up pretty soon and it's absolutely going to break the internet. We're going to go over that though here today. Also, we are going to be talking about Shintaro Furukawa, the president of Nintendo, firing back at some of those Switch 2 reports and rumors that have been making the rounds. And we have some unfortunate news to go over at Embracer as uh, it looks like they, uh, they figured it's time to split up another studio. Guys, if you enjoy these videos, make sure you hit that like button, helps out a ton. And if you're new here to the Spawn Wave channel, make sure you subscribe down below. And we're gonna start today with Super Mario Brothers Wonder, which is a game that I'm getting a kick out of. I'm playing it here and there as I have time. Certainly a good game to pick up and play in, in like half hour increments or something, especially since there are just so many games that I'm going between it. Definitely works in really well with the, the Switch and the, the hybrid nature, but, it does appear that the game is off to a fast start. Go figure, it's Mario. But we can see this posted up on Nintendo's financials. This is on page 18 of sort of the, the summary of different events and, and really their future outlook. But they did say released October 20th. The global sell through two weeks after release for Super Mario Brothers Wonder, 4.3 million units. This makes it the biggest release for a Super Mario title. Now, I guess just the Super Mario in, in general, as we have to look back at sales for all the different Mario games in general. Nonetheless, 4.3 million units sell through in two weeks is very good for... I mean, the 2D Mario games just kind of sell consistently over time. And this one most likely will climb like steadily, I would say to like a 15 to 20 million sold number. And of course we figure that this will continue to sell on Nintendo's next platform. Although we're still trying to work out how exactly something like backwards compatibility will, will function. Uh, to me, this seems like a long-term sales game. So we'll see it around on the sales charts quite a bit going forward, but yes, turns out Super Mario Brothers Wonder selling really well, go figure. Also, we had a bit of a weird situation yesterday as we have Persona 5 Tactica, that's coming up next week, but apparently Sega or Atlas, someone decided to just release it early on Steam for about an hour. If you had purchased it, or I guess it showed up even as you could purchase it, it went live in your library on Steam and you can download it and then play it. And apparently some people went to offline mode and are still able to play it. But like, for example, this person posted up over on Twitter saying that Persona 5 Tactica had been released early on Steam by accident I'm playing the game right now and people were showcasing the gameplay. So I don't know if you'll see a bunch of spoilers necessarily from it since I assume the game is pretty long and it appears the window that it was live was like an hour at the most. Still though, very, very strange thing to see happen. They also messed around with the release dates. It went from all over the place to back to December in the 1960s. And then it finally reset to November 17th, 2023, when it's currently scheduled to come out. So I assume somebody behind the scenes is probably getting yelled at right now, but I don't know, Atlas and Sega, they, them and PC stuff, it has been kind of weird in the past. So I guess it's not too surprising here. Oh, and N7 Day was, well, two days ago uh, with Bioware releasing these teases kind of throughout the day. And then eventually we just got one long video of it, which you can see here. And this is just them once again, teasing the new Mass Effect game, which it's been three years since they made that first announcement at the Game Awards 2020. And... It, it's 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 odd because okay so we have Dragon Age that's still kind of in the background somewhere same with Mass Effect it feels like we get a little bit more than just this teaser I, did they really announce it that far in advance I mean I guess so if we really haven't seen much about the game but I guess at least they had something more than a merchandise or a screenshot for N7 Day, but not too much more so I'm hoping going into 2024 we see something a bit more. I don't, I don't tangible for Mass Effect because wow, it announced it three years ago and it's still not to the state where you can show something in game for it. That is uh, unfortunate. So here's hoping we get some Dragon Age and Mass Effect news at some point in 2024. And guys, with some of the quick news out of the way, let's get into the bigger stuff. Let's start right away with Rockstar and their major, major announcement that is about a month away now. So back in 
September 2013, Grand Theft Auto V released and it came out on the PS3 and the Xbox 360, then went to the PS4 and the Xbox One, then went to the PS5 and the Xbox Series and went to PC somewhere in between all of that. And here we are finally in 2023, GTA 6, we believe, will be shown in December, so next month. And we can see this posted up over on Twitter. This is from the official Rockstar Games account, saying in 1998, Rockstar Games was founded on the idea that video games could come to be as essential to culture as any other form of entertainment. And we hope that we have created games you love in our efforts to be part of that evolution. We are very excited to let you know that in early December, we will release the first trailer for the next Grand Theft Auto. We look forward to many more years of of sharing these experiences with all of you. Thank you, Sam Hauser. Now, if you needed any more convincing that this is going to be probably the biggest reveal we've ever seen in gaming history, just take a look at this tweet where they had announced that it will be, uh, there will be a trailer in December with over a million likes, actually right now 1.3 million, and over 125 million views on it. And all this says, is it's basically an announcement for an announcement. So now think when that trailer drops, because there's gonna be discussion one way or the other. Even if it's a, the trailer looks terrible, there'll be a ton of talk around it. If it looks great, the same deal. So this is really gonna be, I think, a landmark moment just in gaming history overall. And Grand Theft Auto V, they just announced that GTA 5 is over 190 million copies sold. So there's a large audience of people who are very aware of the Grand Theft Auto series. Of course, all of this coming to a head in December. And it does make me wonder if this is something that Jeff Keighley has lined up, but I don't really think that Rockstar or Take-Two would need to pay I mean, potentially millions of dollars, we could say, to be at the Game Awards with some sort of showing. They can just say, we're doing it tomorrow. We're just going to show this game and everyone would show up. It's kind of to that level. So it's really unnecessary to go to any one event. In fact, it'd probably be better that they stay away from the Game Awards because no matter what else is shown, everyone's just going to remember uh, that Grand Theft Auto 6 was shown there for the first time and it would probably overshadow Pretty much everything else. Now this of course has kicked off a ton of speculation as to what exactly Rockstar can do with the Grand Theft Auto series to make it feel like it's gone to the next level from Grand Theft Auto 5. Although 5 came out a long time ago, as I mentioned, about 10 years now. So there, a lot of things have happened just in gaming as we've kind of, uh, kind of evolved over time through multiple generations. But something was brought up here. We can see this posted up over on Inverse from Strauss Zelnick, kind of discussing the idea of AI and how that could make the next Grand Theft Auto even better. Says it may be better, but it almost certainly will not be faster and cheaper, by the way, for AI, which is something we've kind of thought about. Oh, maybe AI can make game development speed up a bit. Not necessarily the case, at least according to Strauss Zelnick in, in sort of this, uh, this talk. But he says, you're a playable character, you're interacting with the non-playable character, that interaction is currently scripted, and the non-playable character are generally not very interesting. You can imagine all the NPCs becoming really interesting and fun, but he did discuss them having to kind of create and develop their own artificial intelligence that then I guess would be adapted into these games. And that's something I think we're gonna hear more and more about as we go along, where kind of developing this AI each company will probably do it similar to just a game engine and maybe that AI can have like a plug and play mentality between all these games. And yes, you could have non-playable characters who do become much more interesting, certainly much more interactive. I guess the other question of course comes up, is this going to be a cross-generation game? Will they announce it at the end with logos for something like the PlayStation 4 and the Xbox One? And I don't believe so, mostly because I'm kind of thinking this might be a 2025 release. I think there were rumors that they would try to get out holiday 2024 and we'll see about that one. I, I kind of think they're announcing it at least two years from when the game will release. And if this game's coming out in 2025, you're, you're not gonna make it for the Xbox One and the PlayStation 4. The only other thing though, that would absolutely break the internet even more is if there is an announcement for Grand Theft Auto 6, Microsoft retweets it, Sony retweets it, and then Nintendo retweets. At that point, Twitter might go down, Google is gone, everything just explodes 
online. So definitely keep an eye out in December. Of course, I will keep you guys up to date because this feels like something we might even get an announcement once again before the announcement and they just schedule out the trailer and just say, we'll see you there for the, what I assume to be, announcement for GTA 6. I keep saying that because they're not referring to it as GTA 6, at least not yet. So not sure if that actually means anything, but I guess we'll see here soon. Next up, let's talk about Shintura Furukawa responding to some of the Switch 2 rumors and reports that have been going around over the last uh, month or two. And this is translated from an interview. So once again, some of the grammar, some of the nuance may have been lost a bit, but I think the message is pretty clear for this one. We can see this posted up though over on I'm say Mainichi, again translated over to English saying it is expected the successor to the Switch will be released, but President Furukawa did not make any statements at the press conference on the 7th. President Furukawa points out rumors are circulating mainly on the internet as if they were public information, but they are inaccurate. Now, he cited reports that Nintendo provided explanations about next generation consoles to specific software makers in 2022, and that Nintendo demonstrated a new model at an overseas event in the summer of 2023, denying them as untrue. Now, the, the thing with 2022, there are court documents and testimony that shows that Bobby uh, Kotick and one other person at Activision, who was kind of the go-between uh, for Nintendo and Activision, uh, yeah, they had discussed the this next-gen system, so I, I don't really know what that's about when it comes to Furukawa and, and mentioning it in that way. However, when referring to current reports that are going around as inaccurate, for example, or even untrue. Uh, yeah, I mean, technically he can say that if one or two things in the report isn't like dead on accurate. He can say, oh no, it's it's inaccurate. It's not exactly correct. Remember, Tenor's the company that will that will deny the sky being blue and then two days later come out and tell you it's cyan or something, right, in a report. So Nintendo has famously done this with many systems, whether it's like the revisions of a DS Lite or a, or a new 3DS or, or something there. So I don't necessarily take this as literal as he's saying, like those are, that's all wrong. There is not another Switch being showcased right now because there is, there is one behind the scenes being showcased currently, but oh, it's not DLSS 3.1 or, or something like that, right? Just picking out the demos maybe that were shown exactly or things that were pointed out of those demos. So it, ray tracing is, there's a lot of stuff that could be kind of nitpicked and saying, well, we're gonna play the semantics game here and just say it's inaccurate. What's inaccurate? Well, we're not really gonna tell you. Oh, and for a comment, also talked about that patent, the dual screen setup, uh, which we can see his response here, where he says, I applied with the understanding that the patent information will be made public, does not mean that it will be installed in a product. That's absolutely correct. That's kind of the idea of a patent. It's more the idea, just having it just in, just in case, right? You never know what come up in the future. If you have the idea nailed down, sure, you can just put it file it as a patent in case you come back to it. Or maybe you want to apply the idea to a different sort of product or even in a different way. So I, I think that one's pretty straightforward there. But as for the situation with the next generation Switch, I think it's pretty obvious that Furukawa does not want to talk about it right now. They still have the rest of this fiscal year to wrap up. They have a pretty lofty sales goal, I'd say, of 15 million Switch systems sold. And remember, we're well into the back half of this generation. So I don't think he's trying to mess that up at all. And they'll talk about the next system when they're ready to, which I think is uh, coming up here in the next four or five months. Definitely, I would say in the first half of 2024, where they can then make a big marketing push to holiday 2024 and release it. Next up, let's talk about WB Games and how they're gonna be making a big push into live service, more so than they were apparently before? Well, this was part of their investors briefing and it was transcribed, we can see posted up. This is over on Seeking Alpha, where they say, our focus is on transforming our biggest franchises from largely console and PC based with three four year release schedules to include more always on gameplay through live services, multi-platform and free to play extensions with the goal to have more players spending more time on more platforms. Ultimately, we want to drive engagement and monetization of longer cycles and at higher levels. We have put specific capabilities we are currently under scale and see significant opportunity to generate greater post 
purchase revenue. Basically, they want to make less games and wring more money out of each one of them. And uh, it makes sense now. You look at Rocksteady and you go, okay, well, this is just kind of the direction that WB has been trying to go. And now they're just, they're just all in on it. So... I, I kind of wonder what, what, what Wonder Woman will look like, that game that's in development right now with uh, with Monolith. And uh, I kind of feel like it's going to have a lot of stuff that's built in to get more money after the fact, different currencies, uh, experience boosters, the always online gameplay, even though it looks very much like a single player game. That sort of thing is just what I'm expecting. And if that stuff isn't there, then I'll just be pleasantly surprised. But it seems... Odd, I, I understand the, the allure of these live service games, these big publishers, but right now we're seeing live service games get canceled before they even come out. Like, Hyenas was right at the finish line, Sega cancels it. Like, okay, that, that's it, it's out there. We see these games behind the scenes at Sony with Deviation having their funds completely cut out because whatever they're working on wasn't worth getting to the finish line. So it seems odd that they just, these companies keep hitting their head against the wall just hoping that they're gonna break through with something, I guess. And now I wonder if if people would really want to see Rocksteady try another Batman game because most likely it's gonna look a lot like Suicide Squad. So unfortunate stuff, I feel like, from WB, but who knows, maybe this is all one big ploy to make themselves be, or be viewed as a more enticing purchase or for a buyout from a large company since acquisition season continues to roll on, so maybe that's part of the strategy. But for now, yeah, WB doubling down on the live service games when it feels like a lot of people are getting fatigued by them. And in our last bit of news, let's talk about an unfortunate report coming from VGC about Embracer, and we can see this posted up over on their website, where they say, according to people close to Free Radical Design, the Nottingham UK-based studio has been part of the evaluation and employees have now been notified that it could close. Now, this apparently, according to them, is required by UK employment law, play on the Embracer division, which runs Free Radical. They have to consult employees for a minimum of 30 days before making any redundancies, including exploring ways of avoiding them. Okay, well, unfortunately, uh, VGC noticed that there that at least 15 people employed at Free Radical have already published posts on places like LinkedIn that they're looking for work. So, yeah, it appears that layoffs are already happening. And what's unfortunate, Free Radical was, was formed, what, two years ago? With the sole purpose of bringing back time splitters. And, uh, who... This is, this is rough because what this tells me is uh, that might be it for Time Splitters. A again, a game that I kind of figured might be a live service, like they just might call it Time Splitters, and it's just an ongoing project, project but another, I would say, live service game is not going to make it out to market. Uh, the, the thing that is at least mentioned here is it's possible that a larger company comes in and maybe funds or, or buys up a stake of, I, I guess, Free Radical or maybe even Embracer. VGC was kind of vague about exactly what they were referring to here, but the idea of maybe a, a Microsoft, a Sony, hey, you know, it'd be weird as if Nintendo came in and, and decided to fund the revival of Time Splitters. It'd be weird like, uh, like them working with Sega for Bayonetta. So I guess anything's possible, but that's kind of where we are at this point, it appears. The fact that people are being laid off from a studio that already wasn't very large to begin with to revive Time Splitters, Tells me Time Splitters is probably up on the shelf right now. And uh, after seeing Volition get get dissolved, I mean, anything was possible here when it comes to Embracer and figuring out what they had to do to uh, mostly downsize. And it looks like right now Free Radical, uh, unfortunately, they're going to be part of that. So we'll just keep an eye on this because I have to assume that eventually Embracer or Play On, somebody will have to comment on this publicly and... Most likely it's going to be that Free Radical and Time Splitters have been put on the shelf or just completely dissolved. So we'll keep an eye on it. And before we go to the comment of the day, we're going to take a look at the poll that I posted up yesterday. Where I ask, with GTA 6 reveal trailer set for next month, when do you think the game will finally release? All right, 47% say 2025. That's, that's kind of what I'm thinking as well. 24% though, 2024, uh, maybe holiday 2024. So they announce it next month and then, oh yeah, it's out in a year. 2026, 40. Look, I love the hopefuls here at 2028, 20, 13%. Like, we're just going to skip this generation. It's a launch title for the PS6 and the Xbox Series XX or 
whatever they call it there. The thing is, next month when they show this initial trailer, I'm not expecting anything when it comes to a launch year, none of that. I, I feel like they're just gonna maybe introduce the setting, the characters, we have some stuff out of context from parts of the story to show how ridiculous GTA 6 is going to be. We might not even have platforms shown, but either way, it's gonna be a very, very exciting time. Rockstar finally ready to tell us what's next in the Grand Theft Auto series after a decade. And we'll finish up with the comment of the day as you're seeing here. This is from Timothy who says, they've got to get a newcomer to play Link, someone who isn't attached to a previous franchise and can pull off Link's look on film. Fingers crossed. Yeah, I saw people of course suggesting different people who can be cast as Link and Tom Holland came up constantly. And my issue with that is, if you have Tom Holland be Link in the movie, it's not necessarily that Tom Holland would play Link, it'd be Link then becomes Tom Holland. So that's all you're gonna see in any of the upcoming games. And, and that, that would, I think, become very distracting. And I like the idea of them going out and casting someone who's very new or unfamiliar to the large majority of people who are going to the movies, right? And I think that is the route to go. But then also, do you have Link talk in the movie? I figured you would, but who knows? Maybe they can even get around that. But uh, yes, that's gonna be a really fun day when they finally give us a look at what the movie's gonna be like and yeah, some of the casting. And ladies and gentlemen, that's gonna do it here for Newswave. If you enjoyed this video, guys, hit that like button. If not, hit the dislike. Leave comments down below about everything we talked about here today. Well, there's Rockstar announcing that we'll finally be getting a trailer for the next Grand Theft Auto game in December. What are you hoping to see there? And then also, what about Nintendo's president, Shintaro Furukawa, firing back, denying those Switch 2 reports and rumors and saying they're inaccurate? And then Time Splitters, it's an unfortunate situation unfolding there at Embracer. Do you think there's any way they can figure out how to save the new Time Splitters game? Thanks guys for watching, and I'll see you next time.